So I just want to start by explaining the relationship between the Gauteng, train, uh, the Department of Roads and Transport, or the Gauteng Provincial Government, and also Bombela, because there's a lot of uh, confusion most of the time when people uh, hear about the Gauteng. train. So I work for the Gauteng train management agency, which is an agency of the Department of Roads and Transport uh, in the Gauteng province. I hope that makes sense. So which means I'm an employee of the, of the Gauteng train management agency, but I'm also a representative of the Department of Roads and Transport in Gauteng. Bombela is the company that has been contracted uh, by the Department of Roads and Transport to operate the Gauteng train. So I'm standing here as a representative of both the Gauteng train and the Department of Roads and Transport. So there are three things that I want to achieve with my presentation today. Uh, one, I want to uh, present our understanding of uh, digitization and what it means for the public transport space. Uh, two, I want to you know, just give you an overview of uh, some of the key projects that we are working on um, in, in, in trying to digitize the, the, the public transport space. And uh, lastly, I want you to identify opportunities where you can potentially partner and work with us um, as a province and as a department to ensure that uh, we, we drive digitization in the public transport. So we at the Gauteng train, uh, as well as our colleagues uh, in the public transport space, uh, we are very obsessed uh, recently about this concept called mobility as a service. And what it is is that this is basically a world where public transport is the preferred mode of mobility where people don't need to own vehicles, where people don't need to have their own vehicles. Uh, because right now, as we are sitting here in this conference the whole day, your vehicle is sitting in the parking and it's doing nothing. So if mobility as a service is enabled, or if it comes to life, then there won't be a need for any of us to own vehicles. Even if we do, it will basically be for specialized use and so on. However, for commuting and for everyday use, you should be able to use um, services, mobility services, as and when you require them. So what this is, uh, what, what characterizes the mobility as a service, uh, first of all, is shared assets. So it's basically the ability to share assets, meaning if, uh, if an asset is not being utilized, someone else can utilize it instead of a car sitting uh, at home while you are here or sitting in the parking while you're here. It's characterized by shared assets, it's characterized by personalized services, meaning it needs to be customer-centric. All the systems that are built within mobility as a service need to be customer-centric. They need to meet the, the, the needs of, um, of our customers or of the commuters. Hence, the experience should be personalized. Uh, it needs to be able to give customers or potential uh, or commuters the options in terms of which modes of transport to use. So in order for me to get to work, I should have multiple options. I should be able to use a taxi, I should be able to use a, a bus, the car train, and um, non-motorized services as well. If I want to use a bicycle to work, I should be able to do that. And um, the experience should be personalized. And um, it's also enabled by things like um, you know, connectivity. It's very important for, for connectivity to be in place uh, for mobility as a service to work. All the assets, all the vehicles, and also the people that are using the service need to be connected. Um, and obviously it needs to be on demand. And now in terms of facilitators, this will be facilitated by uh, data. It should be facilitated by uh, smart incentives. So obviously there has to be some incentives uh, for the commuter as to why they should use a public transport system instead of using their own private vehicle. And also, there needs to be a smart way of being able to pay for, for public transport. So for instance, in, on the heart train today, we are busy uh, testing. We've got a POC that is running with about 1,000 people, whereby you will be able to use the heart train with your, uh, to access the heart train with your Visa or MasterCard. So, and the next step to that is uh, technologies that we are looking at is things like facial recognition, whereby you will be able to just uh, 
be able to pay for the heart rate using um, you know, facial recognition. So for the first time, uh, ladies, you can be able to see whether a man has money or not by just looking at his face. <coughs> so now let's go to uh, the, the enablers. What will enable uh, mobility as a service? Some of the key things are the fact that uh, you need proper infrastructure to be in place. Uh, you need, um, need real-time traffic management and, and, and so on. But in the next slides, I want to actually go into um, you know, enablers that are relevant for our context in South Africa and the province. So the first thing is uh, you need a transport authority. Unfortunately, in April this year, uh, the, the Houten Transport Authority Bill was passed um, uh, so that we can establish the Houten, uh, the Houten Transport Authority, uh, which will be headed up by um, our current CEO. She is actually acting as the CEO of the GTA at the moment. And what this is, is basically a platform or a forum whereby uh, you can facilitate stakeholder buy-in and also coordination. We're talking about all the public transport operators, the cities, law enforcement agencies, infrastructure development, and so on. So you need a body that is able to coordinate everyone's efforts to ensure that there's integrated planning, to ensure that uh, there's a uh, fair or tariff integration and uh, to ensure that uh, you can come up with the necessary regulation to enable mobility as a service. You need a transport center. A transport center that will host or that will house traffic and, and transport information um, that will be able to do the monitoring and management of uh, public transport operations uh, within the province or within the city and so on. You also need to ensure that whatever system that we put in place or that is put in place is customer centric in terms of reliability, safety, customer experience and so on and so on. And um, training. Training is very important because one of the reasons that people uh, don't want to use uh, services like taxis today is because of um, the treatment that they get uh, when they are using this uh, public transport system. And contrary to um, misguided belief, uh, the taxi industry is actually calling for a taxi training academy where they will be taught skills on how to treat the customer, where they'll be taught skills on how to manage their businesses, and, and, and where they will be able to, uh, to formalize the industry and their businesses and, and so on. So things like this need to be put in place because uh, for me or for you to be able to use a taxi, even though you have a choice of using your vehicle, um, you, need to make sure, you need to be sure that you will be safe, you'll be treated well, and, and so on. So things like this need to be in place. ICT. There's a reason why I put ICT as the, as the last item there. And that's because you can't just throw technology at the problem. You can have all the technology. In fact, technology is able to do everything that we want to do today. It's just a matter of how much we are willing to pay and whether the environment is enabling for us to roll out the technology and be able to use it properly. So we need all of these things to be in place so that, once, um, so that technology can, can be uh, leveraged. Now, just to deep dive into the technology, what are the technologies that, um, that need to be in place in order to enable uh, mobility as a service? One, you need your assets to be smart, meaning your assets should be able to speak to you, your assets should be able to generate data, your assets should be connected, and you should be able to control and monitor your assets uh, remotely. Electric vehicles, very important as well, because we also need to uh, you know, uh, eliminate or minimize uh, carbon emissions and so on, and uh, there's lots of advantages of using uh, electric vehicles. So this is where we are looking um, uh, at you know, for, for the future and so on. You need connectivity. You need mobile networks um, uh, and also all, that, all types of connectivity because, I mean, it depends on the asset, whether it's a fixed asset or a moving asset. If it's a fixed asset, we can use fiber, we can use all kinds of uh, Bluetooth mesh and all kinds of uh, technologies that are available out there. And then for moving assets, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, mobile networks, uh, there's 5G now and, and, and so on and many other um, networks that will be uh, conducive for this type of, uh, of a system. Advancements in uh, cloud co computing as well will be able to, to have actually enabled uh, many of the applications that we see today. And uh, it's very important uh, in the public transport space as well that we make use of uh, cloud computing, develop applications that will be able to take advantage or that will be able to harvest data
from the assets and be able to control data or control assets uh, remotely and so on. Big data analytics, very important because once you have a public transport system that is connected and that is smart, there's a lot of data that will be generated out of it. So it's very important to, um, you know, to analyze this data, understand it, uh, you know, pick up the, the, the patterns in the data and develop applications that will, that will take advantage of it. Some level of extreme engineering will be required. Um, what I mean by that is that uh, you know, vehicles as we know them today may need to, take, may need to change. Uh, the roads as we know them today may need to change. So for instance, in China, they are uh, busy with uh, what they call virtual tracks uh, for trains, whereby a train doesn't necessarily have to be on the tracks as we know them today. You can actually uh, draw a track on a road so that the train can actually um, uh, get on the road as well. I mean, imagine if the how train is able to get into a city. So technologies such as uh, virtual trains will be able to unlock things like that. So um, what that will do is that you will have flexibility in terms of your public transport system. You know, as and when things change, if there's a change, if there's a strike somewhere, if there's a concert somewhere, if there's a, you know, a, a, a big sporting event and so on, you are able to then bring in all the public transport systems uh, to assist in moving people and so on. So that brings flexibility. Cyber security and privacy, these are very important uh, issues. Um, a lot of people uh, are very skeptical about implementing uh, IoT and also using technology because uh, there's concerns around security and privacy and so on. So we need to ensure that uh, things like that are sorted out. Artificial intelligence, I'm sure almost every presentation here uh, before I came spoke about artificial intelligence. This is very important. We need to be able to, um, you know, learn from the, from the data that we'll be generating and be able to come up with systems uh, that are adaptive, that are able to um, meet our needs as and when uh, they arise. You have a vehicle that is, you know, that is smart, that has smart components, that is sensing, that is able to communicate um, with, uh, with its environment, that is able to adapt to its environment and so on. And in order for you to have that, you need to, you need to have uh, artificial intelligence, you need to have some level of, uh, of, uh, of extreme engineering, as I said earlier, and, and so on. Now, what are we doing as the, you know, the, the people responsible for public transport in, in, in Gauteng? So there's this project called the Integrated Fare Management. It's a project by the Department of Roads and Transport and we as the Gautrain have been entrusted in, in implementing this project and bringing it to life. So what it is is that the province has a vision uh, to, to achieve one province, one tariff, uh, one ticket uh, transport system in Gauteng. So basically we want you with one card or with your application to be able to tap onto or to hop onto any mode of transport in the, in the province. So, that is the, the vision of the, of, of the department. And in order to enable that, first of all, we need to ensure that uh, the public transport system is integrated. It's multimodal, meaning when we plan the how train, we don't just plan the how train um, uh, selfishly. We actually, a, a lot of people think the how train, the biggest competitors to the how train is the metro rail, uh, the, the taxis and so on, and they are not. Our biggest competitor is the private car. We are trying to get you out of your, your, your private vehicle. The taxis, the metro rails, the podcos, the, met, uh, the, the metro buses and so on, they are our partners. However, there isn't um, a good integration between these uh, public transport systems uh, so that we can, uh, to, to ensure that there's efficiencies. So the first thing that we need to uh, sort out is ensuring that the transport systems are integrated. So when we build the hard train system, we need to be able to ask ourselves, how does the taxi uh, contribute into, into the ecosystem? How, do, how does the taxi become the feeder and the distributor? How does the metro bus become the feeder and the distributor and so on? So the public transport system has to be multimodal and integrated. Single ticket, cash free. We also want to try to get uh, rid of cash um, in the public transport space. And as I said earlier, with one single card, 
with, uh, with a mobile application or even with your face, you should be able to pay for public transport. Obviously, it needs to have a multi-channel access to information. That is, you need to empower people with information. People should be able to get public transport information uh, on their phones, uh, on the website, and they should be able to call or any platform that they're using on WhatsApp and so on. They should be able to, uh, to get information about public transport. It needs to be safe, reliable, accessible, comfortable, and env environmentally safe. safe. And uh, that's the reason I said the, that's why the GTA is required, because we need to work with the cities and other, and other stakeholders to ensure that uh, we can, uh, the, the system is reliable uh, by ensuring that uh, we work with the people that are doing transport planning, city planning, and so on. Uh, it's safe. Uh, we need to work with uh, the police uh, in terms of to, to deal with uh, crime and all those kind of things that are preventing people uh, from using public transport. And lastly, it has to be affordable. It needs to uh, you know, provide value for money to our customers. And those are some of the uh, key operators that we are working with uh, or that we, we should be uh, incorporating into this. The list is not, it's not exhaustive. There's a lot of, uh, since the last time we put together this slide, there's a lot of uh, other public transport uh, operators that have actually sprung up uh, that, that are operating in our city and so on. So the plan is to actually work with all of them to ensure that uh, we can provide uh, mobility as a service to the city, in, in the city and in the province as a whole. So here are the key components of the IFM project. Unfortunately, this thing is not showing properly. So the key components is uh, basically the fact that we have operators uh, that have to be part of the system. Uh, they need to be smart themselves uh, so that their systems are connected to, 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 to the to the central system. You need an automated fair collection or automated fair control system uh, that is able to ensure that uh, people can access these uh, modes of transport without having to, 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 to use cash. You need a traffic management center where the operations will be managed centrally. You also need a journey planning application. Fortunately, we have actually developed a journey planning application and uh, where it is now is at um, uh, all the public transport operators just need to connect to it so that uh, uh, we can ensure um, you know, end-to-end -end journey, journey planning. You need what we call the transport platform. Uh, that is an API-based transport platform whereby all uh, that is uh, device agnostic or public transport mode agnostic and so on, so that all the public transport operators and all the stakeholders in the value chain can be able to connect centrally to one platform. And obviously a network is, uh, is very important to ensure that uh, all these systems are connected. The next slide is basically the high level architecture of that we, we envisage or that we anticipate for all the public transport operators. So the first thing is that on the first layer there you have the assets. These assets can be vehicles, it can also be traffic lights, it can be, um, you know, uh, it can be bridges, it can be infrastructure as a whole, anything that has to do with public transport. Two, you then have a, a smart device layer. So the smart device layer is basically to ensure that uh, these assets are smart enough to be able to generate data, to be able to, um, uh, to communicate and do things like uh, fault, fault monitoring and, and, and so on, and enable remote control in some cases. The gateway layer, in cases where, for instance, in a bus, a bus would probably have uh, four, five, or even more devices on it. And uh, you need a gateway that actually aggregates all the data from all the devices that will be sitting on the bus. So this is not necessarily applicable to everything, but it's a, it's a layer that is necessary as well. Uh, you need the connectivity layer. As I said earlier, depending on the type of connectivity or where the asset is located and what uh, its functions are, you then need the service layer whereby the, that particular service can be managed end-to-end. Uh, -end. But then the next step to that, and as you can see, this is the operator or the service provider domain. So above that, you then have the shared domain. The shared domain speaks about the transport platform whereby all these systems from all the different operators will come together, will be integrated, um, or will be aggregated. So that, I mean, in order for the, I just want to give an example. If the public transport operators that are, you know, located at the Hull train station or that are operating the Hull train station, were aware of how many people are coming from Santin to Midrand, 
and how many people will be getting off at Midrand and where they are going. As a result, they will be able to make sure that there's enough public transport, enough public transport vehicles that are there waiting for those people to take them where they need to go. And in order for that to happen, there needs to be connectivity between the car train and all the other public transport systems. So they can, and there needs to be coordination so that uh, uh, they can work on accurate data. So that is very important. So if there, what we see is a data warehouse where all the data will be housed, the data from all the different uh, public transport operators and also the infrastructure and other stakeholders, a data lake where both, uh, where, you know, external data can also be in, in, in uh, external unstructured data can also be ingested and analyzed and, and, and uh, well, this is where you apply machine learning uh, in terms of artificial intelligence and so on to ensure that uh, you understand your data and you can come up with uh, algorithms uh, that can make the system more efficient. And then above that layer, you have business applications that can be developed. I think there was uh, uh, the gentleman that presented, uh, I think it's Zoho, Zoho Creator. So you'll have um, organizations that have the Zoho Creator type of, uh, of, uh, of services that are able to then take this data because most of it will be, will be made public, will be open. Um, it will be anonymized and made open so that uh, enterprises, uh, academic institutions, and, uh, and uh, other government departments can have access to this information and they can develop applications that uh, serve specific, a specific purpose using the data from, uh, from that data lake. All right, thank you very much. For those of you who want to work with us, uh, there's a document, it's a public document, it's called the ITM P25. Uh, it basically just lays out all our uh, the, the vision of the Department of Roads and Transport in Gauteng and uh, what we want to achieve and uh, the challenges that we are facing and what we want to achieve. So those of you who want to work with us, familiarize yourself with that document and um, you know, identify opportunities where you can actually... <laughs>